The American Southwest is peppered with ancient dwelling sites. They range from small single units to complicated and connected communities stretching over hundreds of miles, which feature structures up to five stories high. The two ancient sites of Acoma and Oriabi have been continuously occupied for almost 1,000 years and still are. There are quite a few larger ancient sites which are no longer occupied though. They include Mesa Verde, Chaco Canyon, Bandelier National Monument, and Hovenweep National Monument. Today's video is about one of those larger sites, Canyon de Chez. The Navajo or Diné word for Canyon de Chez is Seye. The Navajo word is translated as the place within the rocks. When the Spanish entered the area, they heard this name and spelled it on their maps as Canyon de Chelle. In any case, the Spanish word and spelling remain, although the English-based pronunciation of Che has taken hold, and so now it's called Canyon de Che. Canyon de Che is entirely owned by the Navajo Tribal Trust of the Navajo Nation. It is the only National Park Service unit that is owned and cooperatively managed this way. Many Navajo families live within the canyon. And they work there too. You'll see lots of Navajo rangers. Now to see the park itself, you can travel the roads up on the canyon rims. Lots of stopping spots, overviews out there. You can see all kinds of things. But you can also see it from the valley floor. Now you do have to take a Navajo official travel group to do this. Now they have some big trucks, little trucks. They have horses. It's just a great trip. So let's look around. Spider Rock is the first place we're going to go to. You can see it in this gorgeous picture taken from overhead. If you look over on the right hand side of the picture where it says Spider Rock, rock in Red, the little bitty thing peeking out of the shadows on the right hand side, that's a 750 foot spire coming completely up from the valley floor. Now the Navajos have several myths about the, how this spot originated, what its purpose is, what spirits live there. Regardless of whether you have heard those or not, it's still just a magnificent sight, just seemingly uh, inexplicably out there in the middle of the valley floor. So absolutely beautiful spot. You can see again, 750 feet above the valley floor and you can see it very nicely from the canyon rim and the floor itself. White House Ruins is one of the largest structures that is still intact within Canyon de Chez. It was occupied from about 750 to 1300 of the common era by the ancestral Puebloans. Some minor rehabilitation and stabilization work was done on this site by early archaeologists, which may be one of the reasons why it's still standing today. The site has a ground level that would have had nearly 80 rooms during its prime, and the upper section has 10 rooms that sit entirely in the alcove. The ground level structure was a multi-story building that reached closer to the alcove, and ropes and ladders were used to access the upper levels. The senatorial room in the alcove is plastered white, and this is where the name White House comes from. On the walls of the home and on the canyon walls surrounding the home are various pictographs and petroglyphs from the ancestral Puebloans, Navajo, Spanish, and the U.S. military. All right, the next thing we're going to see is the White House Trail. Now, if you want to go see the White House ruins, you can take a trail all the way down from the top of the rim all the way down. Now, at some point, they have allowed people to go there without a Navajo guide. You could always get one, which will help you with a little bit of information. But this gives you an idea of what the scenery is like, both the beautiful view and the trip itself. Mummy Cave is located in Canyon del Muerto. It's the largest of all of the structures in the National Park. It's up to 300 feet up a slope. The East Cave has 55 rooms and four kivas. The West Cave, they found 20 rooms, and there's about 15 rooms in between the two. It's named after some buried remains that almost looked mummified, which archaeologists found many years ago. In 1805, a force of Spaniards from Mexico entered the Canyon del Muerto on a punitive expedition due to some Navajo raids on the Spanish military outpost at Cebolleta. Mexico was still part of Spain at the time. The expedition was led by Antonio Narbona, killed over 115 Navajos and took 33 women and children as slaves. This site is now called the Massacre Cave or the place where two fell off. According to the sign placed at the viewpoint, 
Spanish soldiers may have fired from this very site during the infamous Massacre of 1805. Their Navajo targets were huddled in the alcove below and to the left. Spanish accounts describe a day-long battle against the Indians entrenched in an almost inaccessible point and the killing of 90 warriors and 25 women and children. The Navajo, however, say many men were away hunting at the time. Thus, the dead were mostly women, children, and old men who had sought refuge from the invaders. The Navajo called the Alco Ada Aho Du Nili, or two fell off, referring to a brave Navajo woman who grappled with a soldier and tumbled to her death, dragging the enemy with her. In 1863, U.S. Army forces under Kit Carson entered the canyons. They tried to gather the Navajo for removal to the Bosque Redondo Reservation in New Mexico. When most of the Navajo resisted, Carson ordered the burning of crops and homes in the Canyon Valley floors, including their beloved peaches. In early 1864, some Navajo took refuge in a somewhat isolated promontory called Fortress Rock or the Navajo Fortress. They climbed its steep walls and pulled up their ladders and poles behind them. After remaining there for some time, the Navajos were running out of water. They snuck down the very steep walls and using a human chain managed to gather water from the creek below where the soldiers were waiting. The next day, the soldiers eventually gave up their siege and left. Antelope House ruins are located in Canyon del Muerto. They're named after four antelopes painted on the cliffs, which were probably done around 1830s, according to the Navajo. They've discovered 40 to 50 rooms. The cliff is about 600 feet high, and there are multiple stories in the buildings there. Canyon de Shea National Monument is home to many canyon residents, and not just human, but to a wide variety of wild animals as well. Check out this snapshot of a feline captured by one of the National Park Service wildlife cameras during the early morning hours in Upper Canyon de Shea. This feline is most likely a female based on the size of the head and its proportion to its bodies. Most of the wildlife, such as the mountain lions, bears, foxes, ringtail cats, and others, are seen during the night rather than the daytime. But there's more than just wildlife. There are wildflowers out there, a wide variety of them, from just typical flower types to cactus to all kinds of colors and shades that come out during different times of the year. And there are just some pretty sights out there. You can see some of the structures, and you could also see that it definitely snows during the winter time. Kids love the place out there. Uh, they will enjoy the trip, and adults like it too. In fact, I've been going there since the 1970s. So I hope you've enjoyed this trip to Canyon de Shea near Chinle in Arizona. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to make comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And if you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the circle with my picture in it in the lower right hand corner of the video. The arrow is pointing at it now. And once you have subscribed, you can be notified of when I have a new video posted by clicking on the bell icon in the description field below the video. Thanks again for watching.